Hello friends, I'm your host SRK and you're watching Science for Juniors and as always my assistant Binny is late. Uh, hello friends. Hi professor. What happened to you Binny? Is everything fine? Oh professor, I went to my friend's place and walked from there. Uh, also, it's so sunny outside. Why friend's place? Must be for some new makeup, right? No, professor. She's not well. I went to see her. Oh, what happened to her? She said it is because of drinking dirty water she fell ill. I got so scared that I didn't drink water after that. You don't need to get scared, Binny. You just need to be cautious. It happens when you don't drink potable water. Oh, uh, what exactly is potable water? Where do I get it? Oh, Benny, let me share some knowledge on potable water with you. Let's enter the virtual world for that. Sure, Professor. Purification and conservation of water. A little girl is really thirsty after a game of tennis. She rushes to a tap near the tennis court and drinks a lot of water. Ah, she feels much better now. But the next day the little girl is sick. The doctor tells her that the likely cause is the water she drank at the tennis courts. The little girl is wondering how that could be since the water appeared clear and didn't smell bad either. But these are indicators enough to decide where the water is fit to drink. In other words, portable. How can we make water portable? Let's find out in this module as we learn about what is portable water and how is water purified. We will also learn about ways to conserve this most precious gift of nature. Why did the little girl fall sick from drinking the water even though it appeared clear and didn't smell bad? That's because the water may have been carrying impurities such as very tiny particles of dust and living organisms called microorganisms which cannot be seen with our bare eyes. We can only see them under a microscope. Virus, bacteria and fungi are examples of microorganisms. Drinking water which contains impurities and microorganisms can cause many diseases in human beings such as typhoid, cholera and hepatitis A. So, impurities and microorganisms should be removed from water to make it fit for drinking. Such water which is free from all impurities and microorganisms and is thus fit for drinking is called portable water. I wish I could share this information with my friend before she fell ill. Yeah, if you were not busy working on your looks. Uh, 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 looks? Chill, Binny. You are looking pretty. <laughs> hmm, everybody keeps saying this. Let's concentrate on water, Professor. Oh, oh. No, seriously, Professor. I want to know how water is made portable. Because I'm really scared of drinking any water now. Relax, Binny. Let's enter the virtual world to know how it's done. What can be done to purify water and make it portable? Water can be purified by any methods. Such as boiling and using chlorinated tablets. First, let us learn about boiling. When water is boiled, Microorganisms in the water get killed. So that's one thing out of the way. However, there may still be a few impurities in the water such as dust. Also, as the boiled water starts cooling, some deposits or scum can form in the water. These can be harmful if drunk along with the water. So after boiling, the water must be filtered. This will remove impurities such as dust and any scum or deposit that has formed. 
Now you have water that is ready to drink. Now let's find out how chlorinated tablets help. When chlorinated tablets are added to water, again microorganisms present in water get killed. Now you can filter this water as well if you want to make sure there are no impurities left in it. Now you may be wondering, do these chlorinated tablets have any ill effects on our health? No, they don't if they are used in amounts specified by the manufacturer. Always read the labels before you use any kind of medicine or purifier. So, we've learned that we can purify water by boiling and by adding chlorinated tablets. Noted! From now onwards, I will never drink water from outside. Instead, I will always carry a water bottle with me. One for washing my face also. You never know, the impure water might harm my face also. People don't have water to drink and here you are worried about your face. Uh, what? You see, Binny, water is really precious for us and we shall not waste it. Instead, we shall conserve it. But how can we conserve water, Professor? Let's enter the virtual world, Binny, and learn about the importance of water and ways to conserve it. Water is essential to life on Earth. We need water to drink, grow food, keep clean, generate power, control fires, in fact, simply to stay alive. If water were to be all used up, life on the planet would be in danger. So, it's very important that we use water wisely. In other words, we need to conserve water. Firstly, water can be conserved by simply reducing our daily usage. Also, we should recycle our wastewater wherever possible. For example, sewage water treated and purified and reused for various purposes. We can also conserve water by not allowing natural water to go waste. For example, by rainwater harvesting. In this method, rainwater that falls on a roof is channeled into a storage tank through a system of gutters and pipes. The stored water can then be reused as needed. Water efficient taps and shower heads can also conserve a lot of water by cutting water usage. Since each of us depends on water to live, it is our responsibility to conserve water and help keep our water pure and safe for generations to come. I pledge today to conserve as much water as possible. Precisely. <laughs> I will also drink only potable water. Yes, Binny. Water should be purified before drinking. Binny, do you know who were the first people to record methods for treating water and make it fit for drinking? No, Professor. Let's enter the Do You Know section and you'll know. Egyptians were the first people to record methods for treating water and make it fit for drinking. How did they do it at that time? The records date back to more than 1500 years to 480. Firstly, they boiled the water. Boiled? But there were no gas stoves at that time. They cleaned water by boiling it over a fire, heating it in sun or by dipping a heated piece of iron into it. Wow! After boiling, they filtered water. Filtering the boiled water was done by passing the water through sand and gravel and then allowing it to cool. Hmm, that means even they knew the importance of portable water. That's so true. 
All right, Vinny, it is necessary to retain all that we learn, so let's have a quick recap. Water can be purified by boiling and by adding chlorinated tablets. Water can be conserved by reducing the usage of water, by recycling wastewater, by rainwater harvesting and by using water efficient taps and shower heads. That's all for the day. See you guys later in another episode of Science for Juniors. Till then, take care.